from just a bunch of little features, um, little things that we may not encounter at the checkout process very often, just kind of unique little things that um, we may have invented our own little personal workaround to make our lives a little bit easier, when in reality there's an actual way that we should be doing some of these things in Paladin. So we're going to talk about them today. Um, some of them you'll probably already be aware of. We're going to cover some pretty basic stuff, and then we're going to go a little bit more into some things that you may not be aware of. So bear with me if I'm regurgitating uh, information that you're already familiar with. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, to those that don't know me, my name is Chad Klein. I'm an account manager here at Paladin for about oh, two and two and a half years or so. I'm being assisted by Jenny. If this is your uh, second or third webinar seeing, then you've probably seen Jenny before. She does a lot of them. Uh, Jenny, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and begin recording right now, please. Jenny is also going to be asking or answering some questions. So there's a little questions pane, and if you guys would like, you can go ahead and type up some questions. Um, then she'll answer those, and then if it's um, a question that I need to take you guys off mute for, I'll kind of open it up at the end. We can ask some questions and talk about those if we need to. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started here. Kind of my flow is I'm just going to kind of go through all my slides, talk about the features and the steps. That way, if someone wants to print them out later and have them on file, they've got them. Um, there's also some great knowledge base articles attached to pretty much every one of these processes, a lot of which that I use directly uh, information from the knowledge base articles. Uh, so I'm going to go through all the slides, then we're going to hop over to Paladin and very quickly just kind of run through the features. So that way I know I'm not losing anybody in the minutia and just looking at a slide. Our hands-on people can kind of follow along with us and learn that way. Okay. Okay, so the things that we're going to be covering today, cash paid in, paid out, cash drop. These things are really important, especially for our accountants to make sure that we're handling them and doing them in a clean way and not some sloppy workaround that always throws our books off at the end of the day. Um, open the cash drawer from the keyboard. I can't tell you how many calls that I get from my account saying, you know, hey, how do I open this cash drawer without actually doing a transaction? Well, there's a secret key. Um, that we're going to talk about today that can go ahead and allow us to do that. And there is a password attached to that secret key, so no worries if we have employees watching who you may not want to have just um, free reign on opening and closing the cash drawer. They won't. We can control that. Uh, how do we cash a check? What's the proper process for that? How do we print a quote that is not saved? So without saving it, we just want to print it. Uh, add a note. Search for those notes later using some reports. Uh, and then we've got those three little check boxes off to the left of every line item in the invoice quote module, tax, def, and net. What do those mean? Well, we're going to talk about them, not in super detail, as we've got like the DEF, that's defective. Uh, we've got a whole webinar on that. Um, but we will touch on them, so that way at least everyone knows what those things do, and they're not just buttons that we see every day that we're, un we're unfamiliar with. Okay, so cash paid in. This is going to be very similar to the paid out and the cash drop, so we're just going to go through them pretty quick. In the invoice quote module, we're all familiar with it. You can go up to the top, check out, um, it's F8. You can also hit page up or page down to switch between tabs in a module. On the once you're in the checkout tab, on the bottom ribbon, you want to hit cash. And then the cash line in the amount box, we want to put the amount of cash that we want to add to the register. What are we putting in here? Maybe starting cash. And uh, we can write starting cash in the description. So we can say start up cash and then there. And we'll show our, our daily balancing report, hey, we had a paid in cash transaction of $100. And look right here, here's a little note that says what it's for, start up cash. Now, if you always start with exactly $100, I don't know if it's necessary to, to tell Paladin that you have $100 in there. Just know that you have $100 in there and that your books will come out fine if you take that into consideration at the end of the day. Or you can track it all, whatever the preference is. Uh, then once we have the um, description put in there what it is, you just hit finish and you're done. Very similarly to the cash paid out. Invoice quote, click over to checkout, do the same thing, put the cash, the amount that we're going to be pulling out. Um, and then hit enter. A little box will pop up that says, what is this for? Why are you taking money out of me? And you can say, hey, I'm buying stamps, or I took the staff to a pizza party, or something like that. And then at the end of the, book, the, end of the day, you'll see a paid out cash transaction with your little description on your daily balancing report. And we'll look at that here in a little bit. Uh, same exact thing with the cash drop, essentially. In the checkout tab of the invoice quote module, cash, put the amount that we're pulling out of the drop, put the details in there, too much cash, worried about 
robbery and crooks um, put in safe. And then after that one, this one has the additional step that a manager's approval window will pop up and it will require you to put a four-digit um, manager's password in there or your administrator's password will work, will work just fine as well. And then hit OK. All of that will be tracked on the daily balancing reports. Okay, so moving on here to cashing a check. Pretty similar, a little bit different though. So in the invoice quo module, in the bottom ribbon, you want to go to checkout. Again, you can always hit F8 or go up to the tab or page up or page down to switch between tabs in a module. On the bottom ribbon, hit check. Put the check amount in there, press enter. Now your check processing window, uh, enter the check information. What is the check number? Those sort of things. Um, and hit next to complete the transaction, print a receipt, and then give that person their money back. Paladin will show that you have received a check of that amount and will show change given back um, in cash. So you can go ahead and cash your employees' checks if you want to offer that service to your employees or customers uh, if you'd like to. Um, there is a way, and I didn't go, I didn't create a whole slide about it because I have, well, a little bit more to say on it, but there is a way that you can give cash back on a credit card transaction. You can simply just increase the amount of the credit card money at the checkout uh, by the amount that you want to return to the customer. So, you know, if we wanted to give $20 back to a customer, we're ringing up a ticket for $7, you would ring up $27. Paladin will show, hey, you need to give 20 back to this customer and change. You give them a $20 bill. They now have their cash. Now, why I didn't really go out of my way to make a whole slide and document that process is, is a lot of people, I think it kind of begs the bigger question of do we want to extend that service in the first place? Uh, maybe there are loyal people, you know, your, your mother or brothers or sisters or nieces or nephews that we want to do that with, but for the average person, I don't know, I, I seem to lean towards the uh, hardware store is not a bank uh, philosophy. And also, any time that we increase the amount of money that we're taking with credit cards, we're increasing our liability, right? So on a $7 transaction, to use that same example, and the customer wanted $20 back, well, initially we have a $7 risk if that customer were to call the credit card companies and dispute that charge, get a charge back, dispute that claim. Well, by giving him $20 cash back, we just increased our liabilities now to $27 that he could call, dispute the claim, and now I'm out $27 as opposed to seven, um, simply by extending a service, not even in selling anything and generating any actual profit. So I think there's a fine line between walk, to walk down here between um, doing what's good for our customers to earn their loyalty, but also doing what's good for you and not going outside the realm of, of what we do normally. Um, so that's kind of what I have to say on that. If you would like to give cash back, then that's how you do it. Um, but you know, those are kind of, some, kind of some of the reasons why I might recommend leaning away from it. Uh, to open the cash drawer from the keyboard, super easy here. We're going to go into the top ribbon, click invoice quote, bottom ribbon, go check out. If we haven't caught the theme already, pretty much everything we've talked about so far is in the invoice quote and the checkout. Thus, strange encounters of the checkout kind, which my title, I'm pretty proud of it. Thank you. Um, in the, uh, you guys know I like to have a little fun here in the morning, so uh, we're talking about open a cash drawer with the keyboard, so it's not like the most it's a riveting topic in the world, so we've got to have, find a way to have some fun here and stay awake. Um, in the, so once we're in the checkout screen in the invoice quote module, go ahead and hit the F9 key. It's the secret key here. It's on your keyboard right at the top. It's that uh, third row of four over F9. That will bring up a window that says manager's approval. Put in your manager's approval, hit enter, bing, the cash drawer will open. Okay, to print a quote that is not saved. I hope that everyone knows how to save a quote. I might get in there here if I think about it in a few minutes when we're in Paladin. Um, you know, you can always go to F6, recall transaction or store quote, store transaction, and then store that as a quote. But let's say we just, we don't want to store it. You know, we've got 30 of them in there. I don't, I don't need to store it. I just want to print this out so the customer has something that he can walk out of the, out of the store with a, a rough quote on what his project is going to cost him. But we don't know if he's ever coming back or something, so I don't necessarily want to store it and fill up my list. So you can just go right over to the checkout, right into that. So we build our quote, create the quote. Go over to the checkout module, and on the bottom ribbon, where all the tender types are down there, you'll see print quote. It's F7. And you can print that quote. You get a bunch of different types of quotes that come out. 
Um, you can do a receipt quote, a full sheet quote, a yard order, rain check, special order, supplier building, a bunch of different types of quotes there. Um, so feel free to look through those and kind of pick which one that you like and make sure that you're aware that this feature exists. And just kind of a nice little convenient one so we don't have to store it every time. Um, add a note. Obviously, I, I really hope everyone here knows how to do this, <laughs> but it's really uh, important and it'll kind of segue into my next my next feature that I want to talk about. Um, but in the invoice quote module, add note is F2. You hit F2, type in your note, whatever you want, hit enter as we always do, and now we've got a note attached to the transaction. Pretty simple. Uh, what are, where I'm really getting at with this is this step is this searching for a note. In the reports module, so what we can do is we can standardize um, a note, like a serial number. Let's say we're selling a bunch of washing machines, and we want to track the serial number, the unique number that is just for that washing machine. Well, we can go ahead and pull up a note and start it. We need to standardize this by saying serial you know, number, the, the numerical, the hashtag symbol, I guess it's called these days. Um, and so that way later when we use this process that I'm about to talk about, we can quickly pull up all of the notes by searching the transactions that contain a note that start with serial number, right? Because if it's all standard, if it's all the same, then we can bring up all the transactions that have serial number note in there. And we can see all the serialized sales that we've done um, in a particular given range of time. So in the top ribbon, we're going to the reports module now. Then the reports area pane, and I'll show you guys this here in Paladin in a minute. Uh, we want to click Sales Analysis, go into the What I Need to Know little subsection there. Then over to the right, you'll see the Reports List pane. Click the Transaction Report, um, and then hit Next. Now there's a bunch of different parameters. Feel free to organize and kind of delimit this how you see best. But one of the ones that I'm talking about right now is there's a little drop-down field. Um, and I'll show you here in a second where you can drop down, select Keyword Search, and then select Note Field. And then there's a little box next to it that you could type in serial number. So you're searching all notes that contain that string of characters or symbols, uh, and it'll bring up those, those, uh, those transactions. Kind of a cool little way to see a certain set of sales, regardless whether it's serialized or some other type that we want to keep track of with notes. I think they could be a pretty effective little tracking tool. Okay, so those, those strange little tax DEF and NET, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you've never noticed them or something before, but they're on every line item in the invoice quote all the way over to the left. There's always that jumble of kind of busy information with our stock on hand and stock on order, uh, and then also these three little check boxes, tax, DEF, and NET. The tax, as we've probably guessed, allows us to tax that item at the default rate or untax that item. So if we just want to give, oh, you're a farmer and we're buying a syringe in the state of Louisiana that is tax-free, we just want to do a one-off without setting it up for automation or anything, uncheck that box. Now we can go ahead and untax that item. There are also masters at the top that you can deselect every item if we're trying to make the entire transaction ever, uh, free without having to click every little item independently. This DEF, standing for defective, when selected, this item is marked as a defective. Now, where this really comes into play, why this matters, is you have two stock on hand buckets, let's call them. You have your regular one of just how many hammers do I have there, and then we have a defective bucket that says how many defective hammers do I have there. Now, when we select this, this is essentially telling pa Paladin, hey, don't pull from my regular stock on hand bucket. I want you to pull from my defective bucket regardless of whether or not we are returning that item, which is what's going to happen most office, right? Or most often, excuse me, uh, a customer is going to come in, return our defective hammer, and you're just going to hit the little checkbox, DEF, return that. That will not put it into your regular stock on hand bucket. That will put it into the defective bucket. Make sure it doesn't get mixed up, and we can run reports later about that. Again, we've got a pretty, pretty thorough webinar on how to handle defective items. Uh, I think it was done a couple weeks ago. Feel free to watch that for a little bit more info here. But I tested this out, and this is kind of a cool thing. I wanted to make sure that this feature was existed. It was both a uh, forward and backward meter in that if you wanted to put a positive, so not returning an item, we're now selling an effective item. Maybe we've got a, uh, a rototiller that has a belt that's broken on it, and we just so happen to have uh, a customer who's a rototiller mechanic, and he was like, hey, you know what, if you sell it to me at a discounted rate, I'd be happy to buy it off your hand, take it off your hands for you. You know, great. 
has a little DEF. Now we're not pulling out of the regular stock on hand bucket. We're pulling out of the defective one. And we can go ahead and sell that item without muddying our normal stock on hand, right? So a pretty cool little, little check mark box to be aware of. And I think the most mysterious of these three is this net. Um, what does net do? Because the other two, tax, DEF, defective, those are fairly intuitive. Uh, net is not, however. And what this means is it's saying, this item I would like you, Paladin, to exclude from statement discounting, from trade discounts, prompt payment discounts, from all back-end statement. This item has been discounted enough regardless of whatever automatic structure I have, discounting structure I have set up for this customer, don't include this item. This item is already at the lowest. So that's what that net means. So if you select that, no further discounting will be applied to that item at the statement level at the end. Okay, so those are my features. Let's hop over to Paladin and just kind of run through them real fast. I'm gonna go forward back to all the way to one here. So I've got some notes and we can do this in some sort of structured order here, okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the first one, cash paid in. I'm gonna go invoice quote, and we're gonna do cash paid in, cash paid out, and cash drop all at the same time. Because you guys don't need, uh, you're smart enough to see that's the same process for you know the first three steps are the same here. So I don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, just kind of see what I'm doing here, pay extra attention for the next 30 seconds because this is the first step for the next three slides. So we go check out, cash, enter the amount. We're putting $100 in there. Great, this is startup cash. And then we can do a paid in transaction. Notice we've also got paid out and also cash drop. Let's do a paid in. There we go, and we're done. We don't need to worry about it. We put $100 in the till. It will be seen on our daily balancing report at the end of the day. Same thing here, cash, $100. Um, pizza party, because I love my employees. Paid out. We took $100 out of the till now and tracked it on our daily balancing. Last one here, cash, $100. We got too much money in there. Let's pull $100, put it in the safe in the back. Do a cash drop. Manager's password. And we're done. We just took money out, tracked it. It's clean. We're not going to make our accountant um, upset at the end of the day. Okay, how to cash a check. So over here in the checkout, again, I'm in the invoice quote module, same place that we've been this whole time. I'm going to hit check. And let's say uh, we're going to get to cash a $350 check. We're going to need a manager's password. And now we can go ahead and take the check number in here. Go ahead and put the name, and now we're done. We've got this fully transacted. Look at this, change due 350. We have received $350 in, in check, excuse me, and we're now giving out $350 in cash, which will obviously balance the till at the end of the day, and it's all tracked, so it's nice and pretty and clean, just like we like it. Okay, to open the cash drawer from the keyboard, Start back here, that way I'm not losing anybody. I don't think I am, but let's just go back here real fast. Invoice quote, we over to, go over to checkout, finger, F9. There is no corresponding button. You have to use your keyboard in order to do open the cash drawer with this method. Now it brings out my little manager approval required, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my manager's password in there. And ding, if I had a cash drawer attached to my computer, it would be uh, yelling at me and then opening up extremely quickly. I see that we've got a um, question here. I just want to take a second and read it, make sure that I'm not breezing by anything, uh, passing by when it's relevant to look like. Okay. Moving along here, not 
a question, just a comment. Okay, I think I had this uh, my control thing pulled up here, and it was getting in some people's way. So I'm sorry if you guys have only been able to see half of my slides or something. Okay, so printing a quote that's not saved. Uh, over here, once we build our quote, we can come right over here to checkout and F7 print a quote. Now, obviously, I don't have any items on this. Um, we can go ahead and add some items right here so we can see that button light up. Check out. I can go right down here to print quote. Paladin will ask me, what sort of quote would you like to print? And then you can go ahead and print it out from there. Now, if we forgot how to store this, let's say that's our method for printing quotes, but you do want to store them and you just don't know how to do them, well, F6, store transaction right here, select quote, and hit store. One thing additionally on this, um, if we're confused as to the difference between quote and on hold, why, what's the difference there? Um, on hold is actually removing the items from your stock on hand available inventory so we don't redundantly sell them to a different customer. It's kind of making sure that this quoting is, is clean here. So that's the difference between them and that's how you store the quote. Um, okay, let's talk about adding a note. Obviously this is the easiest one here. The add note button is what we want to use. Um, let's say, let's do this here. Let's use my previous example, serial number, and we'll just punch in some numbers there. Okay, so now we've got serial number inputted in here. Let's just finish this transaction real fast. There we go. Okay, now let's say I want to see all the serialized transactions, all the, all the transactions that I did that uh, contained a serial number. Or maybe I just want to look um, over a specific date range or for a customer, you know, which dishwasher did this guy buy exactly. Over here in reports module, I'm going to go what I need to know. And then over here in this report pane right here, we've got the transaction report. I love the transaction report. If you guys don't look at the transaction report very often or uh, are unfamiliar with it, go in there, spend a little bit of time looking through it because it's extremely flexible. You can change the parameters uh, of how it searches and kind of sift through information in huge ways. And it's pretty, pretty cool. I, I really enjoy this report. Um, it, it, it's super flexible. So the one thing I want to talk about here is just this keyword search for note field right here. Obviously, there's a bunch of other things that I can do on here. Again, this is a super powerful report. But we just want to do note field right now. And let's just look for serial number. Serial number. Now, notice I'm not searching the entire note. I don't have to know the note, the, the number that I typed in there. I just have to know the first part of that note. I'm searching for notes that contain serial number, not our only serial number. So it's a smart smart search here. And when I run this report, it's going to bring up all of the transactions that contain the note, serial number, whatever, um, over the, uh, the selected date range that I have. And if we zoom up here, we can see my tester that I did this morning here, and our serial note right there. And then here's the one that we all just did together here. So kind of a cool little ability to search through those notes. I really enjoy that. Okay, and then just to wrap up here, we've got, just to make sure everyone knows what I'm talking about here, is these three little check boxes, tax, DEF, net. Let me bring up a few items real quickly. There we go. Now notice I've got my master level controls at the top. So if I wanted to untax this entire ticket, boop, I could just uncheck that little box at the top, and it would uncheck the, all of them without me having to go through and kind of take a lot of time to check all these little boxes here. And here we go. I even missed one right there. So tax. This is making this item. Oh, this is a tax-free item. That's why I couldn't check it. Interesting. Um, so this guy right here. Notice our taxes change when our tax total down here changes when I either select or deselect this item. So it's making it tax-free, tax-exempt, or putting the default tax on there. Uh, one other thing with taxes here that I wanted to talk about that I didn't make a slide for, but just good to know information, uh, we can change a customer's tax definition right here at the checkout. So right now I'm showing the ability to tax it or not tax it. But let's say this guy is from the county over, and we're going to drop him off a bunch of lumber sticks, and we need to be ringing up this sale in the county's tax uh, that we're dropping it off in, as I think that's kind of legally what we're required to do in most states, that is. Uh, so over here in checkout, I've got my little tax button down here in the bottom ribbon. I could say, actually, Paladin, this customer is from Arizona over in Orange County. 
and he's from Houston because that's certainly a city in Arizona. So we can go ahead and change the tax uh, definition on the fly. And if I go back here to invoice quote, we can actually see what I've done here. It's added these little notes that show what has happened. Why is this being rung up under a different tax structure than uh, any other sale? So just kind of some good to know stuff there. So uh, pardon my little rabbit trail. Uh, this DEF, is this defective, is this not? I'm actually going to hop over into an item real fast. I'm just any old item. Let's look at this item right here. I just want to point out here, this is our stock on hand bucket that we were talking about earlier for a little bit. This is the defective bucket. This is where you go to see that right here. So when I click this box, this, D, this DEF, pound in whatever we're doing, either a positive or negative transaction, will pull or add to this defective not stock on hand. And then finally, we have our net. Nothing changes here when I click that box, only on the back end. Remember, this is for not discounting additionally uh, off of a statement. So no prompt payment discount, no trade discounts of any sort will be applied to this item. It's now excluded from all back end statement discounting. OK. Um, let's see if we've got any questions. Jenny, do we have any questions? No, it doesn't look like we do. Very good, guys. Well, hey, thanks so much for taking uh, some time out of your busy day to sit here and watch uh, watch this webinar. I hope we had a good couple way, good couple takeaway nuggets of, of knowledge that we can use to kind of better our day to day lives. Maybe make it a little bit easier to track, more efficient, uh, a little more clean. Uh, please join us for next week. We're going to doing the. Uh, um, Jenny, do you know what we're doing next week? Here, I guess I could pull this up and look. Me, yeah, we are. We actually have a special guest speaker. Uh, we're going to talk about Avalara, which is our new tax compliant or tax uh, software essentially that is integrated with Paladin. And the representative from Avalara is going to be doing a webinar and talking about that and how it's going to work with you guys and with Paladin um, to better assist you in figuring out and calculating all of your taxes. Very good. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, well, that one You're should welcome. be exciting. It's always cool when we get one of our partners to come on and, and get talk. You guys probably get a little tired and sick of seeing our face, Jenny and me and uh, Charles, talking at you every Tuesday here. But please join us. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. Uh, we look forward to it. Thanks, guys.